happy Friday. So today we're taking a little pivot from kind of the typical fertility stuff that we've been talking about and the legal stuff to dive into surrogacy. Um, I'm so excited to talk with David. He and his husband just announced that their surrogate is pregnant with their third daughter. So really pumped to talk to him about that journey and, you know, kind of how they decided what they were going to do in terms of finding their surrogate and whose sperm to use and all of that good stuff. So I'm really excited to chat with David. Let me see. Come on here. All right. I'm just waiting for him, but hello. Hey. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. How are you? Happy Friday. Yes. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. I don't even know what day it is. My son's on spring break this I week, know, so it's been right? all messed up. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, I know. It's never oh. like, I feel like during COVID days don't, you know, don't mean anything really, no. right? No. Also, I, mean, I have to compliment it. your, um, you're so well lit. I, I mean, you've clearly done this a time or two. I don't, is it natural lighting or is it, oh, So wow. yeah, I, I'm right in front of a giant window. Um, but then I also have one of those seasonal depression lights. Oh, perfect. <laughs> that is like, it's kind of like a diva light, but it's for, it's for seasonal depression, but it adds yeah. a little, see if I turn it off. It's actually, I don't think it's doing anything. This is now no, just the, the sunlight that's outside, but at least incredible. this keeps me happy. Yeah. <laughs> think, no, yes. This, this well is my, done. my son's bedroom. You know, I work from my <laughs> son's bedroom, but he's yeah, got sure. great lighting. So. <laughs> you got to go where the light is, right? You do, you do. I said our next house, you know, that's how we're going to determine if we're going to buy it. It's like yeah. lighting for pictures. <laughs> you know, it's like oh, I Instagram approved, you know. I understand. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks for having me on this morning. Um, oh, I, I'm so excited for your family. You know, Thank you, you guys just announced that your surrogate is pregnant with yeah. your daughter. Right. And so, you know, going to be way outnumbered now. And, I know. You know, just kind of. I know. It's it's. Are your girls so excited? They are. Yeah. I don't know. You know. I'm sure people have a lot of different opinions or perspectives on you know sharing news like this with older kids. Um, but we waited, you know, quite a bit um, before telling them because you know, as anybody knows who's been through any you know sort of journey with fertility or or you know just trying to have a kid. Um, in other, even in other ways, there's so many ups and downs. And so, you know, we, you know, this last year has been hard on everybody, but kids, man, have just like been through it with, you know, so many changes and, and upheaval in their lives. And so we were like, you know, as much as we want them to know as soon as possible, it just felt like until there was a little more security, um, it was, it, we didn't really feel comfortable sort of putting them through the emotional ringer that we were going through. So we actually just told them within the last couple of weeks and um, it's kind of all that they've been talking about. So it's been really sweet. Oh, yeah. oh that's so yeah. fun. That's so, so, yeah. how old, so, okay, so your daughters are from your husband's previous marriage, right? Correct, yeah, and they are eight and 10. Okay. Um, so the okay. eight-year-old has literally, as long as I have known her, has talked about wanting to be an older sibling. So um, yeah. you can imagine, you know, uh, the excitement there. I'm not sure if she'll still feel that way once she realizes she's no longer the baby. <laughs> um, but at the moment, she's excited. I think that mostly comes from wanting to have somebody to boss around because her older sister does that to her, of course, right? So I think, you know, that seems enticing, like right? Right. It's only fair. <laughs> um, but I'm wondering uh, emotionally once she realizes that she's no longer the baby, how she's going to feel about, about that. But no, they're super excited. Right. And they're at a great age, I think, where, you know, they can help, which is also really exciting. You know, I mean, yeah. we don't have you know, kids super, you know, the two older are not super close in age to the baby. So I think that that actually presents a really cool opportunity to have them super involved with their little sister. Yeah. Um, and, really nice. you know, from things to feeding to like 
in a few years babysitting, right? Like, I mean, so you're right, there's, you're, right. you're like, we're going out. There's, I know, <laughs> I know. So I think there's, that's a really cool thing too. You know, like I, I grew up with a sister who is much older and then a sister who is closer to my age. And, you know, there's, there's pros and cons to big gaps and small, you know, but I think the cool part about having a, a gap there is there really is like, you know, they're going to remember this. They're going to have, you know, yeah. super, they're going to be super involved, which I think is really cool. And they're really excited about that. So. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, well, that's yeah. exciting. It is. Okay. So lots of, lots of questions and stuff that goes into yeah. surrogacy and all of that. So, yeah. um, you know, if, if people have questions, you know, shoot them on over, but you know, I think that, so, Talk to us about, okay, you and your husband got married and w did you always want to have a baby? Because you have yeah. you know, kind of, you know, you're the bonus dad of these two uh -huh. girls. Yeah, I mean, so, I personally, I, you know, I've always wanted to be a dad. So when I met someone who already had kids, um, I was kind of like, okay, cool. Like that's, you know, not, I didn't know that that was the way that things were going to work out, but that's great. Like, you know, I got to really, uh, you know, check, right? Like, I'm, here I am. And, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I think, yes, I think I missed out on all the baby stuff for sure. And I think also, um, you know, we didn't get to do um, that together either. And so I think there's something not to take away from uh, or devalue the role that those girls are in our lives and can, will continue to be. But I think that there was something that we really wanted to do this together, you know, um, at, from, from the beginning. And so, you know, we talked about all the, all the options, of course, um, and, you know, adoption, surrogacy, um, baby, not you know, we talked about all the things, right. But I think ultimately, um, it ended up, this is where we landed. So I think, you know, there's, there's pros and cons to all the options. Again, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. it's just kind of what's right for each person and what makes the most sense. Um, but for us, you know, this is the way we decided to go. Um, and it was, I, I was, we were really fortunate, you know, I would imagine probably a lot of people, um, whether they're doing this on their own or with a partner, you know, there's, there's strong opinions on both sides. We were really fortunate that we kind of were pretty aligned early on with how we wanted to do it and what we wanted to do. So there wasn't really a lot of uh, back and forth, which was nice because, yeah. you know, there's plenty of other things to, to, to worry about and argue about. But the fact that, you know, this was, <laughs> we were kind of on the same page right away was, was nice. So. That's great. Yeah. Great. Okay. So, do, so how, how was the process finding number one, an egg donor? And then number two, a surrogate. Because, you know, you, we've got yeah. two big parties here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it was, again, as most anybody knows who's probably been through even a fraction of this journey, like it is, it's overwhelming, you know, when, when you first say, okay, we're going to do this. Um, I don't think that you, you can't possibly know what all it entails. You could do all the research and talk to all the people, but until you actually start to just dive in, I mean, it, it's a lot. And I don't say that to be discouraging um, at all because it, 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 it can work. The process can work, but it's just a lot. So I think, you know, we, my husband is really amazing. And I'm so fortunate that I have a partner who loves to research and, like make lists and um <laughs> and so I mean it really started with a lot of research right I mean on on his part um and a lot of evaluating you know we knew what we needed we needed a donor we needed a surrogate right to make but but how do we go about doing all of that was the part that we obviously didn't know and so um we ended up working locally um with a clinic to find our egg donor um shout out to forward fertility in Madison we we um we were really fortunate um to find them they were so wonderful and it was so interesting you know the process of 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 finding um and choosing a donor is i mean it, there wasn't one step of the process that wasn't entirely like just like all the feels right i mean you don't anticipate like or i didn't anticipate i should say like 
um, pulling up a donor database and just like all the feels, right? Like, I mean, and we're so early yeah. in this in this process, but but um, you know, again, overwhelming going through all of these things, uh, these records, and reading all this information and thinking like, oh my god, this is such a huge, huge. Um, decision but ultimately we worked with them to find our donor um, and we were really fortunate to find um, somebody who really um, kind of checked you know most of our boxes which really at the end of the day our boxes were healthy you know I mean there everybody has you know other things you know my husband is really tall so there were conversations about like oh you know maybe somebody who has some height right but at the end of the day um, it was healthy right so we were looking for somebody who was Absolutely. healthy um and and also we were really interested in and this is a personal preference thing but really interested in were if possible working with folks who had some experience right so you know we this is a really overwhelming process so the the prospect of finding a donor who done it before and had proven success was really enticing to us because there was some right. data there to be like oh this th this person has done this and has been successful um, that's not a requirement, obviously, but I think we were really interested in working with somebody who had some experience in that way. Mm -hmm. Um, because, you know, it, it's a lot, uh, it, all of it is a lot. And to know going into it, like, oh, you know, this person has done this before and they've had success gives you a little bit of a peace of mind. So, we, you know, we did pay attention to that as well. Um, so that was how we found our donor that lucked out with that person being local, um, it's an anonymous donor, you know, so we don't know who, who that is. You know, we worked with the clinic to have, uh, to arrange all of that, of course, and, and they were just wonderful to work with um, and very speedy and forthcoming. So it was a really great experience. Um, and, you know, again, for people who maybe don't know, you know, you, you go through this, these bank, this sort of like online database, right. And, and you're looking at all of these records and, and, and so, you know, you sort of, you feel kind of weird about it, right? Because essentially we're ranking, <laughs> you know, we're picking out ones that we like and then we're ranking them. And it's like, oh, this feels so like weird, but right. like, that's kind of what you're doing, you know, that that's kind of what you got to do. So we kind of walked away from, you know, this sort of deep dive um, with uh, like a list of like, here are our top three or four, um, because you just don't know, you know, there, there was a lot of questions about who's going to be available when and you know, timelines. It's, you got to kind of got to be ready for multiple scenarios. Um, right. Cause so what's, di what's different about using an egg donor? So sperm yeah. donor, it's all just, it's all just frozen. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like you just, they just shake right. the sperm and you're good. And, yeah. and most often when you're using an egg donor, it's fresh. Mm -hmm. Yep. So yep. I think that people, people don't always know that, that it's, yeah. it's a timing issue of that, yes. you know, you can order sperm and, you know, get it shipped to me tomorrow. <laughs> right. And, right. Um, well, know, and with, I with think, you know, there are frozen options, you know, always, right. I mean, there's, there's, but right. I mean, I think, uh, you know, to your, we were interested in doing, um, if we could make it work to do a fresh, you know, um, not only just a fresh like donor, but like eggs, but fresh transfer too. And so, you know, that to your point, timing, like oh, yeah. it all has to line <laughs> up. And so that's why we also like picked, like sort of like made a little bit of a list so that we, um, if for whatever reason, the timing wasn't going to work out for number one, you know, we would move on to num number two yeah. or, or whatnot. So um, yeah, it's a really, I, you know, it's an interesting um, cause again, pros and cons to all of it, right? I mean, like there's pros and cons to, to doing this and lining it up and trying to do it fresh. There's pros and cons to, you know, freezing it and coming back to it. I mean, and, and sometimes it comes down to availability. Sometimes it comes down to, you know, what you can make work financially. I mean, there's so many factors, okay. right? I mean, it really, it really is. And I think you have to do your research and you have to ask the questions. You know, I think that was for us, we didn't know any of this, you know, so we're really leaning on right. <laughs> the experts, right, in this field to be like, hey, what is, you know, what's your recommendation, right? And, and, and what do you see the most success with? And at the end of the day, you know, most of the time, at least in the people we worked with didn't tell us what to do, of course, but they're giving us their yes. expert opinion, which is no small thing. I mean, these people are geniuses, right? I mean, they're literally <laughs> geniuses, right? They have so much knowledge and hopefully so much experience. And so, 
you know, if they're going to say, well, this is the better option, you, you know, you want to go, I would recommend, or I would say you have better success with this than with this, then to me, that seems like a no brainer. But I do know there are other factors, yeah. you know, finances play a huge role in that decision, those decisions as well, right? Because some yeah. options are more expensive than others. Timing, you know, like, again, not to repeat myself, but, but, you know, if you can't make the timing line up the way you need it to, then all of a sudden, like, you know, you've got some other issues to work through. So, I mean, there's just a right. lot of factors. Right. And, for, <laughs> right. and for people who don't know, you know, you're using, so when you go through surrogacy, most often um, it's a, an egg from one person mm -hmm. and a different uterus, right? It's mm -hmm. two different people. Mm -hmm. So we need to get this uterus mm -hmm. ready to then extract this egg, yeah. fertilize it, so then it can yeah. be then implanted. So yeah, when you're gonna do a fresh transfer like that, there's time, yes. because like my wife and I did reciprocal yeah. IVF, so my mm -hmm. uterus had to be ready before yeah. they took her eggs out, you yeah. know? So it's like all these right. parties. Okay, so, so how did it work with finding a surrogate? Because now yeah. we've, got, okay, we've got the DNA that we want, we've got, mm -hmm. you know, we, we think we've got the, you know, and now we've got to find yeah. someone that's gonna carry the child. Yeah. Um, and that, oof, that was, that was honestly the most challenging part of the journey just because we had, um, you know, I don't know if this is the case, you know, I, I'll just speak for myself for us as, and as gay, as a gay male couple, you know, a lot of people offer, um, to, you know, and, and sometimes in jest and sometimes you're not sure if they're serious or not, where they're like, oh, I'll, you know, if you ever need somebody to care, you know, which is sweet, but also a little weird. Um, and sometimes you're like, oh, I don't, you know, but so we had a lot, I'll say a lot, we had some sort of options to suss out from personal circles first, um, because we, we had had some, some people who've been like, oh, if you ever want to do this, like, you know, again, but you're not sure if they're serious right. or if they're not serious and right. it's so awkward. <laughs> and so, you know, we kind of pursued some of those avenues first, just purely from a financial perspective, right? Cause we have, you know, people who we know who are, so we're like, well, you know, we want to chase this down, see if these are real. And sometimes those conversations take time and they are awkward and then people think about them. And so, you know, that was a huge, huge part of the process that was such a struggle um, to try to figure out what the best option was. Now, we ended up going um, with an independent matching system. So, um, I'll, you know, basically what what you can do and probably what most people do um, is, uh, and I don't want to say most, sorry. Uh, you, they have agencies, right, that you can work with who help determine, you know, who who the best fit is for you, for you as a surrogate um, and kind of do all of the work, right, basically for you. Um, but that also comes at a cost, right? I mean, their expertise and their um, connections come at a cost and it's not a small cost, right? And so, you know, <laughs> when we're working through the financial piece of all of this, which is unbelievably overwhelming too, um, we're looking at, well, where can we pull out some costs, right? Um, and, you know, I think at the end of the day, we were just thinking, I don't know how we're going to do all of this. Cause you mentioned the two parts the the DNA part and all of this, because it's two separate things, but it together, it, it amounts to so much money. And so, um, we were kind of, when we got to the, 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 really the point of trying to figure out the surrogacy piece of things, um, we opted to, we, we had, it was one of those things where we'd had a couple failed starts with, with some, some, um, some surrogates and so we were we were just feeling really defeated right and like what are we going to do what you know what what's going to happen next and um and we had just sort of started to post in some facebook groups that were a part of some gay dads groups some you know and just be like hey it we, honestly it was just like one of those like late night like despair like we are just completely spent emotionally from the, all of the ups mm -hmm. and downs of this process so far what does anybody have any advice, anything, any stone we haven't, un, you know, uh, uh, turned over yet? Um, and we got some people in the comments who were like, hey, have you looked at independent matching? And we were like, well, had no idea what that even was. Um, and then when we found out what it was, it sounded super shady, uh, um, quite honestly. <laughs> um, because essentially the idea is like people are matching themselves, right? Like there are, they are, there are, 
IPs and, you know, intended parents and there are, you know, um, you know, gestational carriers and there are, they're matching themselves, right? That's what independent matching means. Like they are, it's like almost sort of like online dating, right? Like they're finding each other, right? But um, there are all of these closed Facebook groups that we found. Um, most of them were um, sort of, uh, arranged by, by, uh, location. Right. So there was like, you know, some that were like Midwest or like, you know, um, even by state. And so we started to request to join some of these groups again at the time, this felt super shady, right? Like, is this <laughs> legit? This seems super weird, but we don't have anything to lose by looking into it. We have multiple people who are saying this could be a viable option. So, you know, we join these groups and um, start sort of like, basically, I mean, it really is a lot like online dating. You kind of post your profile or who you are and what you're looking <laughs> for. And then you start sort of sifting through other people who are, you know, interested and you start having conversations. And honestly, I never believed that that would work. I really thought we would end up back, you know, working with an agency because I just thought this seems too there's just too much to coordinate here on our own and just the risk seems so high right like essentially we're looking to find a stranger to carry our baby like this isn't like a small thing <laughs> right. um and we're doing that you know like we're doing the work for that and that seemed very like oh i don't know if this is something we should bite off and yet you know we i mean Spoiler alert, you already said it. I mean, we're here, right? We're, we're pregnant. So it worked for us. <laughs> but basically in the process, we, I mean, we talked to, and I say we, my husband did the majority of this communication because at the time, emotionally, I was just like not in a place to keep um, sort of going through this. But just started having conversations with these people, um, these amazing women who are want to carry other people's babies and are just so their stories are incredible in their hearts. And I mean, just uh, incredible. And really it was just sort of like a gut feeling for him. Like I connect with these people. I connect with this person. Um, and I will say about our, our surrogate, you know, um, uh, you know, I'm not going to disclose anything personal about her, but you know, she knows this and we've talked about this um, from day one. And I'm not even joking when I say my husband you know, I had asked him, I said, you know, if you're going to do this. That's fine. I need a break. Right. So just don't, don't tell me what's going on. Just sort of do this over here on the side. But he was, he told me from day one of starting to sort of dig into this. He was like, I'm, I started talking to this, this woman and I, I have a really good connection with her. It's kind of weird, like already. And I was like, okay, yeah, for sure. You know, and weeks pass and yeah. he's still talking to this woman. And he's like, man, like I just, this woman, like we're having such good conversation and we're aligning and our values and like, he's like, I just, I feel connected to her. We're just talking over the internet, you know, Facebook messenger. Right. Um, and so ultimately it came down to, you know, he had, he was talking to a few different people, but this person, it was just a gut thing. Like I can't shake it. Like this person is, yeah. we have such a great connection. And so, you know, we met her, um, we did a video chat and we started talking and it was just like, it happened so organically to the point, like, I th are we going to do this? I guess we're going to do this. Right. Um, and we lucked out. I mean, I, I say that full well knowing, like, we are so lucky. I mean, that could have gone so, so wrong. And we right. <laughs> were the luckiest, you know? I mean, really. And not to, I mean, I'm sure this is another question that you have, but not to, the in-between from there, meeting her to where we are now. I mean, there's a lot of, I think the one piece that gave me, the one thing that gave me peace of mind and all of that, um, as we started to get more serious talking to her was, you know, there's a lot of legal stuff that has to happen before you commit. Yeah. So at the end of the day, even though this is a person we don't know very well and that we have a good gut feeling about, there is a contract that ultimately you enter into um, that does help protect everyone, right? So worst case scenario, if my gut was wrong, right? Um, if we're gonna get down to the the, the nitty gritty here at the end, there everybody's gonna have to sign something, right? Which is does make it much more serious and, and more, um, more real, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, who, somebody had asked like, what protections did you put in place? Yes. And yeah. And yeah, there's, there's always a contract and also always. there's always, well, there should be lawyers on both sides. So yep. the intended parents will have an attorney 
and the gestational carrier will have an yes. attorney as well just to yeah. negotiate and just make sure that yeah you know everyone's so making aligned. sure that because both a... yeah yeah making sure that and both people are protected oh my god like yeah. again talk about things you don't know that those legal documents were so long and I get it. Like, I get it. Like, when I, right. but I mean, like, I was not expecting, I was just, I was naive, right? I wasn't expecting to receive these giant PDFs to have to go through. And they were so long. Um, but yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, to your point, yes, both sides have, um, have an attorney, which is something that us as intended parents, you know, we finance all of that, of course. Um, and yes, both sides, um, essentially hammer out all the details. Um, and then um, once everyone is in agreement, everyone signs it, that process can be lengthy. But in our case, you know, again, because we'd had such a great connection with, uh, with her, we had kind of already had all of these conversations sort of um, just, I mean, off, off the record, or I don't know, you know, just sort of personally, we sort of <laughs> chatted about all of these different right. things. So when it came time to put the, the contracts together, it was really simple because we already kind of knew what we wanted. It was just a matter of formalizing it. So that was really nice too, because yeah. I think we had That's built funny. a bit of a relationship where we had had a just very honest, frank, and sometimes awkward conversations um, <laughs> to be like, you know, how do you feel about this? And, you know, what are, what, are we on the same page about this, right? So that when it came time to sort of draw up this paperwork, we really had talked through most of the... Um, the items. And I will say another thing about that, that about um, just sort of about our journey in, tr in choosing her, you know, I mentioned with the donor, you know, we really wanted to, to find ideally find somebody who had done this before had a proven track record, we felt the same way about and may probably even more strongly about a surrogate, like we really wanted to work with somebody who knew it, who kind of knew the ropes, right, so who could help us, like set expectations, but who also had 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 success again. Um, and so we really fortunate that that she also had done this before. And so that really helped us mm -hmm. in terms of these conversations to be like, well, this is what I did before. And, and that this works mm -hmm. great, or this is what I did before. That's and good. I didn't like this. So we were really working anecdotally too, from her experiences, which was so helpful to us um, in terms of understanding, you know, what to expect and setting expectations for what was right. to come and putting together that those legal documents. Yeah. So is your surrogate local ish to you or yeah yeah so away? i mean a little further away but local ish right so still in the mid in the midwest um and we were willing to i mean i think that was the other thing right like we weren't we would have done i guess i don't i think we would have done anything at the end of the day to get our healthy baby but um we started out i mentioned the the closed facebook groups looking in groups that were uh, location based that were close ish to us. So within a, you know, a five or five ish hour radius from where we are. Um, so we didn't go into it with the idea that, you know, we would be working with someone who was super far away, though we would have probably been open to it. We, you know, we started looking um, in, in sort of a, a we, we determined what the radius was of, that we wanted to work with. And we started sort of looking within that radius. So yeah. um, I think, I think that's another thing to consider, right? Because people don't think about, you know, travel costs and especially now with COVID. I mean, look, we've not done this outside of COVID. So we only know how this works in COVID, but times, but, you know, travel is so much more complicated or it was, especially when we started this, this journey, it's getting a little easier, but, you know, travel is really complicated. It's more expensive because you have to pay for travel costs if you want, you know, depending on what you want. So, you know, thinking about, you know, proximity is also important and was another really great expense saver too to work with someone who you know didn't have to travel um and then you know when when and if we want to travel to to you know to see them or obviously with the birth it's all within driving just you know so it's like it's not yeah. uh we're not incurring a lot yeah, of extra travel can't... costs Right, because I guess you can't go to appointments and stuff now. Right, right, COVID yeah, because of COVID. And thank God for, um, I mean, thank God for technology. I mean, it's it is it the same? No, but I mean, without it, we would have, you know, missed all of these sort of big first things. So it was, it's. I'm so grateful for FaceTime, and you know, um, just I think to, like. The, the the medical professionals in general that we've worked with at least who are so like 
yes, like, of course you can face, you know, whatever we need to do to make you feel like a yeah, part of this because you yeah. can't be here because of COVID. I mean, so we have felt just as much a part of it. As, and I mean, granted, we don't know anything else, right? Because it's not like we were <laughs> going to be now, but, but we felt, we have felt such a part that everybody has made us feel such a part of the process, which is really important and harder, right? Like you said, because of COVID, mm-hmm. because, you know, even if, you know, this person was in our backyard, you know, live 10 minutes away, you know, versus a few hour drive, you know, we, we aren't allowed because of COVID right. to be even in the room. So, you know, it kind of, yeah. um, it, it's a bummer, but also again, technology is, is amazing. So I, I feel yeah. really lucky that we have those things as resources. Okay. Well, one thing, yeah. we, one thing we did not cover is, is this yeah. your sperm or your husband's? Yeah, so we opted to, you know, I, I, if it's okay, I would love to keep that, you know, sort of between us. Um, you know, I think it's a very, I think what I, I'm happy to talk about sort of like the, the thinking and, you know, um, sort of the, the, the thought process behind it, though, because I think it is something that um, obviously you have to think about, right? Um, and you don't really until... Um, it comes time for those decisions. Um, you don't really think about how heavy that can be, right? To like, oh my God, this is, a, this is, this is big. Um, and I think the other thing with that too that I don't think probably a lot of people may realize that regardless of how who you choose to use or if you choose to not know and you know whatever, um, everybody has to go. Both partners have to if there are you know partners here in the process and not per someone working as, as a single parent, you know, have to go through this process of the testing and everybody has to essentially be approved, right? Whether they're using, um, you know, my DNA or his DNA, right? Um, everybody has, to, we both have to go through the same testing. We both had to, you know, have physicals and have psychological testing and blood work and all of the things, right? Um, which is, again, something that um, you just don't think about or that you're not like, oh, it, it doesn't, there's so many rules and FDA regulations that require, you know, if you're doing this with a partner that, you know, you're, you're really both in it, regardless of whose DNA it ends up sort of being at the end of the day. Um, you, you're very much both in the weeds with all of the testing and the process, which is a lot too. Um, but I think, you know, in terms of the decision, I, what I will say is like, it's a really, it, it is a really big decision, but at the end of the day, I think, most people entering into this understand and know like DNA is such a small part of the, I mean, it really, is. I mean, we, it is a big deal, right? Because you want a healthy, healthy baby um, and you want to have the best chance of success. But I mean, does it really matter at the end of the day? Right. I mean, you know, this is going to be our kid. So I think, you know, I, I'm sort of contradicting myself a little bit when I, I guess, but I, what I, what I, want to say as a point of just like advice or um you know sort of like what we learned in going through that is like it's a big deal yes but it's not the biggest deal right um and so Mm -hmm. just to keep that sort of in mind as you're making these decisions it's like man you know it feels really again overwhelming all of this does but you know this is still our kid regardless of whose dna or maybe it was neither of our dna you know i mean it it, i think that's there's just you have to keep it all in perspective, right? Yeah, my, our kid, my both of my kids, they're not mine, yeah. biological yeah. children. We yeah. use we use my wife's eggs for both, and you yeah. know, I can speak from experience that it doesn't matter at all. Yeah, like, I'm raising my children now. I carried them, so I have that yeah. connection sure. there. But it doesn't matter at all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. and I think you great. know, I mean, I think that's the the. I mean, it's cliche and cheesy, but it's true, you know? I mean, not to say that, like, you know, it, it's as simple as that, because I know that there's a lot of, there's a lot that goes into this, and, and I, I, I know that, but but um, but really, if you boil it down, it is as simple as that, you know? And, and I think, you mm-hmm. know, we, we wanted the, we, we did all of the things that we did, we did because we wanted the best chance at success at having a healthy baby, and so... Um, yeah almost all of our decision making was based on that, you know, Um, and whether it was our preference or what we thought we were going to do or what we didn't think we were going to do going into this, it really ended up sort of, we leaned on, you know, the experts and what's, what's going to give us the best chance here. So. Right. Right. 
That's great. Exactly. The health, a healthy baby is the most important thing that you can. Hundred percent. Yeah. And yeah. Totally and I mean, totally I think it's important awesome. to have your eye on that, you know, at the end of the day with however you choose to, you know, go about having a child. But if we're specifically talking about this with surrogacy, like have your eye on the goal. And, you know, at times I think, you know, you have to sort of set um, some things aside and say, well, this is what I thought I wanted, or this is what I went into this with this preconceived idea, but that's not going to be what's best here. It doesn't sound like, you know, or, or I'm having this doctor or this person saying, you know, this is probably the better route. And that wasn't what I wanted to do, but I want a healthy baby. We want a healthy baby. Yeah. And so I think this is, I think we're going to have to set that aside, you know? And so, yeah. I, and really when you, when you put it all in that frame of, of reference, uh, everything seems so small really. And, and, and you, yeah. you, you want to make all of your decisions in order to, have that happen you know um and that's kind of Absolutely. how we chose to do it so i love it i love it well we're you know on the path to that beautiful happy ending um yes but we you're, are you're still a few months away still yeah. a few months away yeah. right so yes yeah, yeah. So, we'll, so we've got all the surrogate. things oh go ahead i was gonna say well your surrogate she will deliver by her Yep. Right? Yeah. That's the plan. Yeah. And then you'll yeah, yeah, yeah. drive to her. Yeah. Yeah. We, okay. I mean, and again, you know, in choosing our, our fertility clinic, you know, we, we chose our clinic. We actually ended up pivoting sort of in the middle um, of our, of our journey because we found her. And so we were like, we, you know, let's find a gr you know, and we ended up finding a great clinic that had multiple, um, multiple clinics, some, some that were really close to us mm -hmm. and lucked out with one that was really close to her. And so, it just all fell into place in that regard. Um, so it was really the, the burden on her to travel really far was not there either. Um, and it was just, it just kind of worked out like so, so wonderfully. Um, and I think that's the other thing too, like, you know, there's so many different options for that, but you know, once we found, okay, well, this is the person that we like and we really want to, you know, this is the person that we feel like is the right choice to carry our baby, you know, well, how can we make this as easy as possible for her? And, you know, the clinic that we thought we were going to use wouldn't have been easy on her, you know? So it was like, you know, well, let's just figure out what, what's going to be better. What's going to be easier. How is it going to be um, simpler for her to get back and forth to appointments? Cause spoiler alert, right. there are a lot of, I've already said that twice now. I don't know what spoiler alert, but there are a lot of appointments that, that you have to go to. Right. Um, and we only have a few as, as the men and they're all at the beginning. And, yeah. and you, then it's you over. guys, you guys, you got it easy. Yeah. <laughs> in, well, you have it easy in that regard, but, yes. uh, but for, yes. you know, but at least yeah, we so, had, I mean, we had a uterus. <laughs> right. But that's what, but even still, I mean, you had so many appointments you had to go to. And so it's like, you know, <laughs> trying to choose things that are, that make sense. Um, again, just sort of logistically for her um, was super important to us. Cause you know, I mean, like you said, you know, we can FaceTime in COVID or no COVID, but she can't, right? So what's going to be easiest for her to get back and forth to, um, can't find to that all one in, right? <laughs> of these appointments? Yeah, yeah. So. I love it. Um, well, somebody asked you, what's the biggest aha moment you had about the process so far? Something you wish you would have known Ooh. when you started? That's such a good question. Um, okay. Um, I think this is this I don't think this is my husband and I are very different which is why I think that we one of the reasons why I think we work really well together is because we both have very different strengths he is so much more um uh driven than I am um in general I'm I I, I tend to be a little more on the relaxed side um but one of the, the biggest aha things that I think we had and one of the biggest things we learned was speak up for yourself. So what I mean by that is, you know, you work with all these amazing people and all these experts and doctors and scientists and, you know, embryologists and, you know, every, all, all of the above. Right. Um, and they're busy. They have other, um, other clients, other patients, you know, we're not the only ones. Um, and I think it's really easy to think, Oh, I don't want to bother them. Right. Like they'll get back to me when they can, you know, like, Oh, but on the flip side, 
it's been three weeks and I've not heard anything. It's okay for me to reach out. It's okay for me to advocate and say, Hey, you said, you know, you, you mentioned we would get these results and, you know, seven to 10 days, it's been 12, you know, can you kind of tell me what's going on? Because nine times out of 10, it was just a oversight. Oh, we hadn't got to it yet. Well, we hadn't, you know, but I think advocating for yourself in this process, like keep in mind, like, you know, yes, these are human beings. There's never an excuse to be disrespectful to someone in this industry, in these, that, those industries, but you can advocate for yourself and ask questions and follow up and do it in a respectful way. And I swear, I mean, once we found our surrogate, this process moved really fast for us, but it only moved fast for us because my husband was on it. Like every step of the way, he was <laughs> calling, he was following up, he was checking in and we weren't passive. We were very, very like, I mean, I would, I would, some might say pushy, but very respectfully like, Hey, you know, kind of holding people to sort yeah. of their word. Right. And I think just, it's really important to advocate for yourself. I think people, forget that like you know this is a really this is not this is a big deal and but we're the the client we're the patient right you know we're the ones who are spending the money and so it's reasonable to ask questions and to follow up and to hold people accountable for you know if they give you a timeline hold them accountable to it right and don't just you don't always have to just wait for them to get back to you or to call you right and i think we saved in so much time and headache and heartache because we stayed, and I say we, my husband, stayed on it every step of the way. You know, we were constantly like in contact and communicating and asking questions and advocating for ourselves um, in this process, mm -hmm. rather than just sort of sitting back and waiting for people to get back to us, which is okay. There's nothing wrong with that if that's how you choose to go about it. But for us, we felt like we had so much more control and also the process moved so much quicker when we were just so, that much more active, you know? That's great. And I, I think a lot that. of people yeah. feel, I think a lot of people feel like, oh, I don't want to bother. And, oh, I don't want to be pushy or I don't want to get a reputation. But I think, and this is a much larger conversation beyond surrogacy, but I think that we can do that. We can have those conversations and still be really respectful and still be really kind and not be pushy yeah. and not be an asshole. Right. I think there's a, there's a misconception that, you know, advocating for ourselves and, and, and asking questions and, and following up is bad, but God, I mean, I don't think, I truly don't think we would be pregnant right now, let alone, you know, where we're at in this, if we hadn't done that, I think we would still be waiting and it would still sort of be true. Cause there's so many people out there and there's so much happening, but we really, right. you know, kind of stayed on it. So I, I think That's if great. you want it and you really want to make it happen, be active, be an active part of the process and don't just sort of sit around and wait, you know, keep on it. It's so much work and it's, it's a, it's a lot, but, stay on it, you know? Yeah, I love it. Yeah, the fertility process is overwhelming. You know, there's so much, you know, that goes on. I mean, my doctor, yeah. she, she said hi, she's listening right now. I was emailing her all the time. <laughs> all the time, emailing her. And I will say that's out. too, I mean, that's an amazing <laughs> point that we didn't really touch on in terms of like, you know, making these decisions. Again, go with your gut. Like when you're trying to find a clinic or when you're trying to find a doc, like go with who makes you feel the best, right? And and not, I mean, yes, of course, qualification's huge, right? But like we had such a good feeling with when we met with and had conversations with the clinic, the fertility clinic we ended up working with. And again, shout out to Vios Fertility. Um, and all along mm -hmm. the way, they were... Like t we were on a texting basis with these people. I mean, they cared for us so hard and so well. And I think, again, like you should never feel like you're bothering someone or that you're too much or that they're hard to reach because yes, they're busy and they've got a shit ton on their plate. But like the good ones know that you're on the other end, regardless of who you are in the process, waiting and having anxiety and freaking out and having a thousand questions and the good ones don't care and they welcome that and they don't make you feel shame for that and I think it's really important that you sort of go with your gut early on of like you know we're gonna be in a relationship with these people for a while <laughs> um so I don't want to feel bad <laughs> bothering them very right? intimately I, too <laughs> yes 
but I don't want to ever feel, I don't want to ever be made to feel like I'm bothering somebody or that I'm, you know, I want to make sure that I feel comfortable and they made us feel so comfortable. So I think just a point of, to your point, you know, you were talking about just mentioning, you know, emailing your doctor with a lot of questions. That's the kind of doctor you should have, right? That's the kind of people you should be working with who are okay with that and don't ever make you feel bad for it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, again, it's a lot. And I always tell people the first appointment that you have, like you're interviewing them. It's to make sure that you feel good with this doctor. This is a intimate process (laughs) and it's a very emotional one. I mean, you know, I'm going to, I'll shout my doctor, Jenny Nichols at Sincera Reproductive. You know, she called me one time and I think it was like eight o'clock on a Friday night to just tell me about a test result and just personally check in with me. I've cried the on the phone. I've like, I've yeah. cried in the office, on the table. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, but you want someone that's going to hold your hand. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And I mean, if you're not, I mean, look, I, I, these people are literal angels and the work they do is incredible. But like, I, I, we had the same experience where people were available to us and they were, kind and they went out of their way and I mean that's you know you're exactly right you are interviewing them whenever you're sort of the beginning of this process and don't forget that right like don't forget that don't forget that you have the control there um and you need to feel good you know go with your gut so I see your doctor commenting yeah Yeah. that's my doctor that's amazing you're making a human like there's human lives here yeah like look look at this my doctor is even here She's supporting us. Yeah, we, we've done a I bunch of interviews that. on different fertility topics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we kept it. I mean, like, they made my babies. Like, they're my favorite people in the world. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know well, I mean? and too, like, like, you know, I don't know if you felt this way, but like, we were, you know, recently within the last few weeks, like, released, you know, for it to, you know, our OB. And so oh my gosh, it's I was so like, sad. I don't want to leave. I mean, like, I mean, I do, because that means that things are going well, right? Like, but I'm like, oh, these people have just cared for us so well. And they've, they have yeah. given us not only, like you said, this amazing gift, but they've also just like treated us so well, you know, and they've given us so much care and attention that I don't want to, like, I, this feels so safe and so good yeah. that like, you know, <laughs> moving on is like, oh, I feel sad, you know, so. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they, they love to see babies. So oh, you know, yes. send the pictures, yes. go in person when 100%. the world is safe again. A hundred percent. We, they, yeah. they said that multiple times to us. And I was like, I don't know if you really, do you really mean that? Cause I will send you all the pictures if you really mean that. <laughs> You're like <laughs> um, my daily updates. Cause... <laughs> right, 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 right. Are you sure? Yeah, like no, just I, I, follow me on Instagram. <laughs> You'll right, see all the right. And some of them have. I think that's the thing that's so cool is like these are people we're going to be connected to for life, and I love that. You know, so yeah, that's so special. That's so special. Yeah. Okay. Last. Oh my God, my doctor's on vacation listening to oh. this <laughs> even on vacation cool side, she's no cool side, so that's i don't that's feel nice. too bad for her yeah we don't we don't feel bad for you <laughs> um so okay talk to me about last question the surrogate have you talked about having a relationship after the birth yeah yeah and i think that's one of those things you know correct me if i'm wrong because i feel like you probably know more than i do but i, I mean you can if you want to i mean you can put anything in a legal agreement right i mean if you wanted to be so harsh as to say, like, we don't want to talk to this person after, I mean, those are things you can sort of suss out, right, mm-hmm. in a in a in a conversation legally. But um, but no, we were never. Uh, for us, we always. I mean, that person is going to be a part of our lives forever. We're always going to be connected to that person, but we want to be actively connected to that person. So um, I think it was really, an, it was never really a conversation. Even it was just sort of. Again, my husband and I didn't even really talk about it. It was never like, oh, let's sit down and talk about how we feel about this. It was just a, this is how we're going to handle this. Um, because, you know, everybody has different preferences and, 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 and I don't want anyone to feel shame for having one preference over, over the other. Um, but this person is giving us such an amazing gift. It's like, uh, not only would it just be, I, I feel like it would just be really cruel to just be like, okay, see ya. But also, 
we've really developed a relationship with this person who we check in with all the time now and who we're in constant contact with. Like, I don't, I, this person has become a friend, you know, I mean, I, I wouldn't just drop a friend when they did a favor for me either. I would still be friends with them, right? <laughs> they did something nice for me and we're still friends, right? So I think right. absolutely, you know, we want to, to maintain a relationship. Um, and, you know, I think, I think for us, we want to be as transparent as possible with, with our kid too, of like how they got here and, you know, understand. Uh, and part of that is, is knowing who, who she is. Right. Um, so absolutely. I mean, it was never a question for us. So. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you for sharing all this. This is amazing and beautiful and cannot wait to, you know, continue watching this journey and then meet that little girl and, Thank you, know. you. We're really excited too. Yeah, well, I appreciate we, it. I know. I and know. thanks for asking right, me. Well, to, thanks for asking me to chat. I know, like you. I I just a quick shout out to you and the work that you're doing. I know you are mm -hmm. really intent on trying to get resources to people and get information out there. And you know, I really appreciate that. I hope other people are taking advantage of that because you know, as we've said a thousand yes. times in this conversation, there is so much, but um, there are people who've gone before us who have done so much of the work and so much of the gathered resources and information for us. And you don't have to do this alone, ultimately, right? I mean, there's so much yeah. good information out there. So I appreciate what you're doing to help curate Thank some you. of that and help to pull together resources for folks because it's so needed and it's it's so it's, it's another step in helping people not feel alone on this journey because it's a lot, so. Thank you. Well, thank yeah, you. of course. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Well, everyone, go give David a follow so you can follow the rest of the journey and, you know, see that little lady in the fall. All right. That's right. Thank you so much. Bye, Bye everybody. Yep. <laughs>